Hi everyone and welcome back to Create Something. Today we're gonna build this 3D printer. After emptying out the box, I laid all the parts over a table and started processing the acrylic pieces by removing their pink protection layer. First, I started by assembling the left side on the x-axis. With the provided screws, I secured each side of the box, the z-axis rod guide and the linear bearings. Then, I fastened the stepper motor with the same fashion. Once that was done, I secured the motor belt pulley, the end stop button, and finally the adjustable screw that later will serve as a regulation for the z-axis height. With that being done, I moved on to the right side of the y-axis by assembling first the belt tension mechanism. Followed by the component box, rod guide and linear bearings. The next step was the hot end carriage. I fixed both linear bearings onto the acrylic parts and secured the hot end with the provided metal plate. Also, I dry fitted the fan on the heat sink to see how it would later be attached. Next, I quickly assembled both Z-stepper motors onto their supports and set them aside so I could work on the printing bed. With the base in hand, I fixed the three small linear bearings on its bottom and dry fitted the Y-axis rod. As it slid well, I started working on the Y-axis tension mechanism and later on the filament spool holder. These builds were pretty straightforward, with only two acrylic sides and some ball bearings secured by M3 screws and nuts. After that, I fastened the Y-axis motor to its frame, the bullet to the motor and secured the end stop button in its place. Then, it was time to start with the big parts. I assembled both legs of the frame by simply fastening them with the screws. Every piece is well marked and have grooves to slide in the nuts that later will secure the screws. Then, I attached the back plate containing the Y-stepper motor and the frame structural rods. There are two simple threaded rods that will hold the parts together so the bed can freely slide on the rails. Next, I added the front part, the sliding rods and the bed carriage to the frame. After confirming the free slide, I went on and tightened a bit more all the screws. Moving to the Z-axis, I fastened the motors to the frame, attached the couplings to the shafts and routed the cables through the frame openings. Working on the top of the printer, I inserted and secured the Z-axis lighting rods and the filament feeding motor. Also, before locking the shafts, I slid in both ends of the X-axis. With those in place, it was time to move on to the horizontal rods. These were inserted along with the hot end carriage and secured in place. Then, the threaded shafts were mounted to the motor couplings, completing the X-axis Similarly to the Y-axis, after having this one in place, I made sure the hot end carriage could move freely, adjusted the screws and secured the tracking belt in place with the help of some tweezers. Back to the hot end, it was time to fix the fan, which was done using the 3D printed supports provided. 
Also, I took my time to put together the Z axis end stop and the LCD screen mount, which was mounted right afterwards. Followed by the Y axis belt that was cut to length, positioned in place and secured into the Y carriage grooves. The final touch was given by the aluminum heat pad. Moving to the PSU, the only work here was attaching the power cables. After attaching the wires, the cables were routed into the frame openings and the PSU mounted on the printer frame. On the opposite side, the MKS controller board was fixed after around 5 hours of building and 2 more hours of software tweaking, the printer was up and running some G-code for my first successful print. In 2015, I bought this printer as a kit out of AliExpress. It was pretty inexpensive and it took me around 4.5 hours to have it completely assembled. Actually, to have in a working order, it took me a couple of days so I could figure out how to configure the printer correctly. There is a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to 3D printer. Is it still a work in progress? There is no consumer printer just like the ones we're used to. But once you figure this part out, it is completely fun and it's worth a try. With a printer like this, you unlock a whole new world of possibilities for your projects. It is completely cool that you can design your own stuff and have it printed on your desk. I've been using this for a couple of years now, and I say, this little machine here, which nowadays costs a couple hundred dollars, it's totally worth it. Well, that'll do it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for your company. I hope you liked the video and you learned something. If you liked the video, please click the subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up so I can get this content in front of more people. Alright, see you next time and let's create something!